Welcome to WTHA's award-winning sports feed. Tonight's show is brought to you by Five Star Mitsubishi. Here are your hosts, Jordan Tracy and Andrew Lee Penwell. Hello, it is 1110. That means it's time for Sports Beat. Turn up the volume, light the candles, cut the Taco Bell cake. It's Andrew Lee's birthday. Yay! I love Taco Bell and I love cake. <laughs> it's week seven of Sports Beat, and we start with Bell and Antis hosting Mount Union. So let's get this one right away. Take it out to Bellwood. Bellwood football from the start. From the first one to the last Okay, we're ready. And Santa is only two of the weird things we spotted tonight. First quarter, Nick Cost gets the Blue Devils on the board from seven yards out. PAT is no good. They lead 6-0. That was the number two weird thing. Kid dressed as Michael Myers. Second quarter, Trojans answer with Kanan Atherton getting the pitch. That's on a 10-yard touchdown. They take the lead 7-6. Congrats to Lexi Loverich, homecoming queen. Yay. Later in the half of Bellwood's Jordan Hexcox takes the handoff, bursts through, and dives into pay dirt for the score. Bellwood wins a close one, 25-22. Holidaysburg hosting Oil City, homecoming for the Tigers. Congratulations to Pete and Lydia Schinnell. Queen. Oilers up 16-0 in the second. Drew Weiland gets Holidaysburg on the board. The two-yard touchdown run Hutton into the lead. There's also a kid with a backward Giannis here. So that's another Oh, that's weird. Closing seconds of the first half, Tucker Rosman finds Gavin Bell in the corner of the end zone to make it a two-point game. The Oilers lead 16-14 at the break, but Oil City wins 38-21. Up next, it's the red hot undefeated Penn Cambria host in Somerset. That's right, an uphill climb for the Eagles, who are winless. Coming up that hill. That's Jordan the Things on. <laughs> Down seven already, Garrett Harold with a strike to Zach Grove. And the Panthers would go up 14 0. After forcing a three and out, the Eagles are punting, and the Panthers, well, they're scoring. Carter McDermott <laughs> has places to go, people to see, no Good time man. for tacklers. Central Cambria with its second special team score. Penn Cambria with its central, second special team score on the night. And they roll 7 0, 49 to nothing. Senior night as Glendale as they hosted Everett this evening. Glendale in their own territory. Zeke Dubler taking the hand up and he's gone. He's doing things. Run, run, run. Getting Zeke, good deal. Feed good. Zeke. <laughs> In good field position, the Vikings would cap that drive up with the touchdown for the 7-0 lead. Still in the first quarter, more from Glendale. Trey Mazura dropping and scrambling and kind of running around. And then heaving one to the end zone for Connor. Kosholsting, Glendale up 14-0. Kazoon tight. Close to the end of the half, Ian Clark finds a wide open George Clunes pit Ed Everett on the board. 21-7 Vikings and Glendale win 34-19. Forest Hills hosting Bishop Guilfoyle. Let's go to the third quarter. Carson Keseywetter on the QB draw. Punches it in to give the BG a 21-7 lead. Later in the half, check this out. Keseywetter gets into trouble, leaves the pocket, floats it to Drew Abraham, and chokes the defender, and he is in for the score. BG wins it 49-7. to all right, Jordan, we've had a lot of fun, but oh, we thanks. need to go take a quick Taco Bell break. All right, we will. Coming up next, we are back in the L-Hack for a battle for the top of the heap. It's Bedford and Richland, and it was a close one. Don't go anywhere. Game of the Week is next. Time now for our Game of the Week, sponsored by Five Star Mitsubishi in Altoona. And this week, it's a battle of the top of the pack in the L Hack. You're a poet, and you didn't even know it. I know. Bedford on the road to take on Richland. The Bisons are coming off a tough loss at Pancambria. The Rams looking to stay undefeated. A 50-point win a week ago, but the Rams were down 7-0 in the first. Bison driving Kevin Ressler. He's going to hit Ethan Weber with the wide receiver screen. And he's going to take it 22 yards all the way to pay dirt as the Bison lead 14-0 at the end of the first quarter. The Rams responded before the half. Look to respond. Sam Pena hits Evan McCracken. Release the Kraken! And number six does the rest. 43 yards to the house and the score. And that cuts the Bedford lead down to seven or siete. Then with three minutes Good. to play. Bangle. You want to go sports sure. beat in that's on you Sure. It's Pena the call in his own number. The Bison uh, down one at the break. The Rams are rolling. Open up the third with a seven-minute drive. Pena puts Richland up 19 to 14. Three scores for the Rams. But the Bison strike back, retaking the lead. Wrestler 
Leads the offense down the field, keeps this one himself, scoring 16 yards to the end zone to give the Bison a 21-19 lead. But on the suing Richland play, McCracken scores the game winner as the Rams stay perfect, 25-23. Let's send it down to Risky Biz. A thrilling 25-23 win, and Richland, you guys have stayed undefeated this season. Yeah! yeah! Big game is exciting, and Evan, I'm going to start with you. You guys are down 14 to nothing. How are you guys able to come back? Well, you know, we've been down a couple times this season, and, you know, we just have Warriors on our team. We just keep fighting, you know. It's that mentality. Also, we work all summer, we work all fall for this moment, and we just have Warriors on our team. We just have kids that keep working, kids that step up every day. And you guys have won some really close games this year against good teams. How important is that for you guys going forward? We're going to have close games. We have two games coming up. Penn Cambry, who's undefeated. They're good. It'd be Bedford, so do we. <laughs> all right, and then Sam, what were you seeing from the defense today? You had a great game just running all over the field and passing the ball well. Um, our, they set up a lot of things that worked for us on offense. Coach Barry put in a great, great game plan for us, and they left things open, and we took advantage of that. And now uh, you guys had that one interception at, in the first quarter that led to that uh, Bedford touchdown. How are you guys able to just respond and then just kind of control the game from there. Well, we knew we bit ourselves in the foot. That was nothing they did. We just made a mistake, but we knew we'd bounce back. We knew we were the better team tonight. All right, guys, congrats on the win. Good luck against Penn Cambria next week. Yeah! yeah. All right, Jordan and Andrew, we'll send it back to you in the studio. Thank you, Ryan. A packed house at Berlin for this matchup as they look to improve to 7-0 on the year. Down 20 to nothing in the middle of the second. The Cougars trying for the comeback as Connor Yoder finds Isaac Berkey over the middle, shaking his way into Berlin's 10. The Cougars would not be able to capitalize on this big play. The next drive, quarterback Bryce Shadaro finds Noah Kimmel turning on the Jets for this one to make it 26 and nothing in this game. Run, run, run as Berlin continues to widen that gap in the second half and went on to win huge. 54 0. Berlin defense still putting up zeros there. 6 0 State College hosting Carlisle for Memorial Field. Second quarter, Carlisle up 3 0. Lucas Smith unloads one for Carson Schwartz. 70 yards for the Thundering Herd score. Later in the quarter, State College's Owen Yurka hanging on to this one, finding the end zone for the Little Lions. 10 7. Carlisle closing the second of the half, and Carlisle fumble! A scoop and score for Michael Dinger. It's a thick Six, everybody. Oh, yeah. That puts State College up 14 to 10, and State College rolls to a 49 to 20 win. It's time now for our hit of the week, sponsored by Belding and Mole. And Brady Collins from Clearfield lowered his shoulder and laying down the thunder. Let's Look see it this. in slow motion. Boom, boom. That's our hit of the week. Nice hit there, Brady. You hit me. Oh. Time now for our band of the week, sponsored by Sisney and O'Donnell, and it's the Bellwood Antis Band playing us into the break. Show Confer Toyota. We're more than. Yeah. Be back at it. Channel 10. Channel 10. Channel 10. Channel 10. You know what it is. Channel 10, baby. Channel 10, baby. Welcome back. We go up north as Dubois takes on St. Mary. <laughs> Those kids are nuts. They're going to get in trouble. The Beavers are coming off a loss at Punxsutawney. The Dutch lost last week against Brookville. Let's go to it at Dutch Country Stadium. Game tied at 20. I just took your read. Yeah, it's okay. So, what a, like, yeah, okay. Trickeration here. Charlie Coudre to Logan Moiser and Moiser to Colin Reitz for the 33-yard gain in the first play of the fourth quarter. Coudre on the QB keeper as the Dutch go up 27-20 to 20 and win 30 24-27. This one's yours. From okay, sure. Cameron this County game. hosting Sheffield. This one was all Cameron County. Their first possession. Maddox Bachman finds Malachi Zolka for for the five-yard touchdown. Two-point conversion good. 8-0 Cameron County. Just for the half, up 30-0. Jamison Britton takes the handoff and is gone. 26 yards for the touchdown. And Cameron County rolls to a monster 52 to nothing win. How about that? Well, the Red Raiders trying for their second win of the season against the Ramblers in this rainy matchup. First drive of the game for Winber and Luke Holster bucks a 30-yard run to get them threatening early in this one. Here he goes, run, 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 off to the sidelines, turn in the corner, yes, or barely someone over. 
Marsdale's defense would hold strong, forcing Winber to kick it, but the snap is fumbled. This is wild. And holder Jonas Euler running around right side of the play, right into Pater, to put the team up early. Crazy times there. Winber defense forces the quick three and out, and then John Schuster gets free on the run onto the left, takes it to the house to widen that Rambler lead. They roll and win 57 0. We've had some big wins big tonight. Big wins tonight. Junetta Valley hosting Tussie Mountain. First quarter, JV looking to go up top, but it is Kyler Kaufman coming down with the interception. Fast forward to the second. Reed Edwards calls his own number, finds the sideline, and that's going to set Hornets up deep into Titan territory. A few plays later, Jacob Rodkey. He's going to get the sweep for the Hornets. He'll find the edge and in for the score to tie things up at the seven. Uh, tie things up at seven. Hornets win it 34 to 14. Time for our wrapped up performance of the week, sponsored by Roundhouse Harley Davidson. We want to give it this week is PIAA Officials Appreciation Week. We want to thank you for the tough job you do. A little wave there for us. We wouldn't be able to play without you. We'll be right back. Soon it will be time to relax outside in your Her mill outlet is a proud sponsor of WTAJ News. Welcome back. Let's go to the Mountain League with Tyrone and Clearfield facing off. Tyrone's coming off a 31-7 loss against Bald Eagle last week in the Bison. A shutout win against Huntington. All right. Clearfield wearing the camo uniforms tonight. On the opening goal in Eagles drive, Ashton, walk this way, rolled out. Found Colton Miller wide open in the end zone. The nine-yard score, 7-0 at Tyrone early on. Clearfield would respond, but first, check out this hit stick. Brady Collins, ready for it? Boom! That was our hit of the week, as you saw earlier, and well-deserved. Clearfield would score a few plays later when Jacob Samsel found Collins for the six-yard score. Game tied at seven in the second. The Tyrone would win 21-14, and this is the first time Tyrone has beaten Clearfield since 2009. A long time ago. Central at Central Cambria this Freshman evening. Freshman in high school. <laughs> Red Devils, I was in middle school. Red Devils hang in with the Dragons early on. Down 7-3 here as Jeff Hohenstein hits Eli Lingenfelder. Their second touchdown connection of the night. 14-3 Dragons at the half. In the third, Central in the red zone. Facing fourth down, Hohenstein using his legs. Finding pay dirt. 27 second half points for the Dragons who roll. Big 41-10. And in this next one, undefeated Penn Manor from Indiana County taking the trip to take on Portage. Fast start in this one as Max Hill takes this himself for the Comets. And he gone. Anderley, what does he do? Run, run, run. All the way from the first play from scrimmage. And Comets would lead 7 to nothing. Now Portage stampedes back with a big play of their own. Off the screen, Bodie Leo is off, off to the races. I'm going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Ties things up. At seven for the Mustang, but Penn's Manor stays undefeated, 55 to 28. We'll never get old. Five and one, Chestnut Ridge taken on two and four. Bishop McCourt this evening. First quarter, no score. Lions in their own territory, and quarterback Nate Weisong keeps it and gets some great blocks here and takes this one to the house and the score. Second quarter, Lions up 20. Crushers with the possession. Owen Clay come picking it off here. His second pick of the season as Chestnut Ridge wins 48-6. to Coming up next, we crown our plays and player of the week. The real estate market is changing. Allow our Let's take a look at some other scores from around the area. Uh, Altoona wins at 27 to 23 over Chambersburg. Uh, Bald Eagle area beats Phillipsburg Osceola 42 to 13. Huntington gets the win over Belfont 29 to 6. And Cambria Heights, the Highlanders, beat Homer Center 31 to 12. Time now for our play of the week, sponsored by Star Trailer Series. And this one is the Thick Six State Colleges. <laughs> Michael Dinger, the scoop and score against Carlisle. Little Lions win big, thanks in part to the big man. It's time now for our Player of the Week, sponsored by Walker & Walker Equipment. I don't know who that last sponsor was, but it was crazy. Sam Penna from Richland, four total touchdowns tonight, and taking home the win in our Game of the Week. That's how you bring home Player of the Week. Congrats to Sam. Big win. That was a close game. We got a couple close ones, but also That's a couple big like ones. big, wide, open scores and some zeros. It was but fun. A lot of action more next week. We're almost playoff time, so uh, get ready for that. Buckle up, folks. We'll see you next Friday. Bye. Bye.